this is my Grizzly 4178 12 inch jointer that I picked up for the low price of $400 after about a month of negotiating. Uh, it is a 1998 model and as you can see it's had a rough life. I picked it up literally in a field. So is it salvageable? I don't know. Uh, here's what I do know. There's no motor. Um, the electrical has been cut out of it, quite literally. Um, but that's about all I can tell that's bad. Here's what's good is while yes, it's very rusted, the beds move. I was able to free them. Uh, the, the head here um, spins. Uh, there are grease zerks that, before I started filming this, uh, I pumped some grease into. It spins just fine. Um, everything else moves and does what it's supposed to do. But ultimately right now, it's just a hunk of useless cast iron. So, my intent is to restore this. I think I can get it usable for about $250. And that includes a new motor. It's a three horse, 220 volt single phase motor. I can get on Amazon for about 200 bucks. Um, I'm sorry, 175 bucks. I need to figure out a switch of some sort because that's been hacked off. Uh, I will need new blades and who knows what else, but let's get started. Rub it on this thing for up <coughs> five minutes now, and you can tell a, a noticeable difference. So, like here, the stone slides back and forth pretty easily where I've been working, and here it's like super sticky, gritty. So something's happening. I'm just not not sure what yet. I'll tell you, my arms haven't had a workout like that since I took the blue pill for fun in college. And uh, yeah, it's a story for another day. Anyways, let's see what we got here. Hey, it's not half bad.
So when I initially took this thing apart, here's what the bearings look like. Obviously not in awesome condition. It's, it sounded like a freight train going down the road. It was very noisy. So we put new bearings in it and this is what it sounds like now. I'd say that's quite an improvement. So I'm going to put this back on the machine uh, after I put the pulley and stuff back on. And um, I'm going to use that to mock up the motor plate and we'll get to that in the next part. I want to show you this so you don't make the same mistake I do. So I have a cheap hundred dollar, 120 amp plasma cutter here and I love it, but this silly little thing here draws an incredible amount of amperage and it will not work on the outlets in my shop. So I've had to get a little creative and this is the cord coming out of the back of my plasma cutter. And as you see here, it goes into an adapter I've made to plug it into a 30 amp outlet on my massive generator that runs the whole house when the power goes out. So the problem is the shop is, um, it's a 14-2 wire, so it's only good for like 15 amps, so it throws the breaker. And this is the only way I can get enough amperage to the plasma cutter without throwing the breaker, and it needs all that amperage to actually cut through metal. So. I've got one side tacked on. <clears throat> I went and pulled the mount off. That's in. Another tab here. And I'm not in. It's a little rusty. So, got my tab located. I'm gonna burn it in real quick.
It's only like a shade or two off. <laughs> I don't care. This is an L630P, uh, it's a 20 amp rated cord. The motor draws 15, so we're under our amperage rating there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the plug part off first of the receptacle, um, wire it into the motor, and then feed it up through here so I know how much I need, and then the rest of it will just be the extension cord that goes to the wall. That's All right, so we have a pole here a pole here, so those will be our two hots, and then here's where our ground connects. So I'm going to put some spade connectors on here and a ring terminal for the ground, and we'll hook them up. I have everything cleaned up and out of the way. Check my box one more time. Okay. I'm gonna plug this thing in real quick. Nothing smells like it's burning. How about that? I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down in part one. Um, I'm kind of at a point right now where I just can't convince myself to put this thing back together with the three blade head. It, it has to have the spiral head. And unfortunately it's about 1500 bucks and I just can't quite come out of pocket for that right now. So I'm gonna try and have a fire sale, figuratively speaking, uh, and get rid of some of this wood behind me to finance this cutter head. Uh, and then in part two, I will uh, rebuild the fence and all these pieces, put the spiral cutter head on and get it working. And it's just gonna be a little bit. Thanks for watching.